Jim Snell in the United States of America. In this video, I'm going to discuss the repair of the kickstart mechanism in the Gas Gas Pro engine. And photo bombs by Shopcat Scruffy. Did you know that the kickstart pedal is its own extracting tool? First, just loosen the bolt two turns. Then, when you open the pedal, it will be pressing against that bolt head and it will extract itself from that tapered shaft, just like that. Then when you take the bolt the rest of the way out, you will find that the kickstart pedal just comes right off, no problem. Taking out all of the clutch cover bolts, including the ones that are around the water pump, we can then remove the clutch cover. What I'm doing here is I'm taking off the clutch cover and not disturbing the water pump or the coolant system, leaving that all connected. No draining of the coolant or anything. How do you get the cover to come loose? Well, you just pull on the clutch lever on the handlebar and that pushes it loose. Some wiggling and press on the kickstart shaft while you're pulling on the clutch cover. This way you don't disturb the kickstart mechanism, keeping it in place. Some oil will dribble out, that's normal because some is trapped down in the cover there, even if you've already drained the engine. There's a washer there. It usually sticks to the clutch cover. It goes on the kickstart shaft. There are three different designs of the Gas Gas Pro kickstart shaft. The one on the left there with the notch in the end of it is from the 2002 Pro. It interchanges with the other ones. Actually, you can use all of them backwards, but starting in the 2010 Adam Raga edition, there is a longer one, and then all bikes produced after 2011 use it. That's to clear the wider frame that's on the 2011 and newer bikes. I'm going to show you how to extract it here. You can do it um, with the Kickstart Idler Intermediate Gear in place. It's a rotation and kind of a wiggle and twist as you can see what I'm doing here. And out it comes. Alternatively, you can take off that idler gear, that intermediate gear has a circlip. So we'll use our circlip pliers to take that off. Behind that clip is a washer. There's two sides to a clip. The sharp edge would be pointing out on this application. The interior edge of the clip is sharp. Use a magnet. You can take off that washer. Then the gear comes off. There's a bearing under there. Look at your gear closely. I mean, use a magnifying glass. Look at every tooth on that gear. Because if there's a chip tooth, even one, that can make a lot of noise. In fact, it can sound like you have bad crank bearings or some other type of serious problem when in fact it's a gear that's chipped or more than one. Um, that gear rotates all the time when the engine's running. That's the bearing that it rides on. Behind it is another flat washer which actually is identical to the one that is on the front of the gear so don't worry about confusing those there's one on each side of the gear and that I show here the outer one I removed previously is exactly the same so it's easier to take the kickstart shaft off when that idler intermediate gear is off and I show here a tool I made actually from an old kickstart pedal but you can use your kickstart pedal to take it off it's not a big deal and again I'm going to support it with my thumb and then just kind of pull out and some wiggling and then once I get the interior part of it free of that bearing it sits in then I can twist it a little bit and then begin to rotate it and unwind the spring clockwise is the rotation to take it out and then it comes right out of there there's that washer that's behind on the shaft. Make sure you keep that with it. There is a nylon kickstart stopper. And on later models, you may find it's made out of a malleable aluminum. It takes a ball in, Allen, to get that out of there. You don't have a direct line for the Allen. You take out the retention bolt and take that out and look 
closely at it. That's what the kickstart gear that's on the shaft comes up against when you release the pedal. And if that's all chewed up and nasty, change that while you're in there. You may find it has a pink color that's just stained by the transmission oil over the years. I like the aluminum one better uh, as a replacement. And I just grip it again with my magnet. You can see what it looks like. This is a good one actually here that we've got in my hand. This is what it looks like. And it goes in there. Kind of fiddle with it a little bit to put it in. Beginning in model year 2009, there was a change to the cases with a little machined area to properly position the kickstart stop. And they slightly repositioned the stop itself. This is an early case. A later one, you can see the red arrow pointing to the little machined area where the foot of that stop sits. That's what the early stop position looked like. And this is the later position, which would be correct regardless of the year of your bike. That's the bearing that the shaft rides on. It's a needle bearing. Be sure all the needles are in there and laying in their proper position. So here's the gear that's on the shaft. It has a spiral cut inside it. In this photo, the top one is bent if you look at the right side of it. And again, here on the flat plate, the right one is the bent one inverted now. Close up, you can see on that right one, that outer part curves upward. It's common for those to be broken or bent. This is the indexing. This is what it should look like when the gear is all the way out, all the way in on the spline. And uh, according to the little spring, which has a part that goes through a hole in the shaft, you must align that clip with the hole. Then that notch in that aluminum bushing lines up with that clip and that hole. There's a special type of plier that's for these clips that are on the kickstart shaft. You can see here how it's made. You just put this plier in the center of the clip opening and it spreads the clip you don't want to open the clip too far because you'll bend it if you're going to plan on reusing them see here then you can get the clip off the shaft what I do is I take a sharpie and I mark the shaft and then I use a screwdriver kind of to separate the spring a little bit to plug it in there you can see in this photo it goes through that hole. You can see it in the hollow shaft. This is what the spring looks like when it's all put together properly. Uh, another view, giving you an idea of the indexing of the gear. When you're changing that gear, just pay really close attention to how it goes on the shaft, what it looks like in its parked position. And this is what it looks like together. So remembering your washer there. And remembering to check your bearing that's in the case there. Make sure all the needles are there. And plug in the probe on the spring and then counterclockwise one complete rotation to wind the spring. And then supporting with my thumb, I press up to get the end of the shaft into the bearing very gently. Get it started in there. And then it'll seat down in there. There we go. There's a friction spring there um, that plugs into a kind of a hole in the casting on your clutch cover. And that's what actually draws that gear out when you pull the pedal back to start the engine. That gear comes out the spiral spline and engages in the intermediate secondary idler gear. Turns over the clutch basket, which turns over the crank, which starts the engine. And then when you release the pedal, that friction spring pulls that gear back in on the curving cut of the shaft and it retracts and goes back in there and stops against that little plastic stopper. And then this gear here, this is the kick-starting gear. So it meshes with this gear here we call it the idler gear, the secondary gear for the kicker. So when 
the kickstart mechanism when the pedal is moved then this gear turns this secondary gear which when it's turned the basket turns and the basket turns the primary driven gear which is the one on the end of the crank and the crank turns over and the piston goes up and down and the spark plug fires and the engine starts and as always I really appreciate uh, your kind consideration and you're following me on the YouTube channels over the years. I've enjoyed making these videos and I, I do them so that people can maintain their bikes and, and have more enjoyment and less frustration. Thank you for watching my video.